What's up, everyone? It's Caddy with MoneyVest. So today we're going to be using our MoneyVest platform to analyze the biggest company in the world, and that is NVIDIA. So I'll be doing a complete fundamental analysis on NVIDIA. We'll also be going over our MoneyVest score, M score for NVIDIA out of five, and we'll do a complete trend analysis. We'll take a look at the revenues, the earnings, the profitability, the margins, efficiency, valuation, everything in this video. And as always, if you enjoyed, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And also do check out the Discord link down below. There's very very limited spots available until July 8th, and that's when the beta launch will happen for the MoneyVest platform. And right now we're offering a very special price and a huge discount of 51%, and you can lock this pricing in forever. So if you sign up now, you're going to be locked in for that price for life, and all the additional features, all the additional tools and functionality and everything that we launch over the course of the next 6, 12, 18 months, you're not going to have to worry about the increased prices because you're going to be locked at this discounted rate. So link's going to be down below with four spots left. We'd love to have you on board. So let's just dive right in. Uh, NVIDIA, as we already know, is one of, if not the hottest company in the world right now with the market cap now sitting well over $3.3 trillion here for this company. So a beta, of course, of 2.27. So very, very, very volatile. This right here was the entire price action on Tuesday with the price, of course, moving higher uh, to well over $136 per share. And of course, trailing 12 month revenues of just under $80 billion and how quickly the company is ramped up in revenues. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. And of course, this right here is going to be some of those numbers. So let me just come down a little bit and I'm going to delete some of these other things and boom right here okay perfect so if you come over to revenues on a three-year five-year and 10-year basis we're looking at insane growth of well over 30 to as much as 50 percent these are compounded annual growth rates for nvidia diluted earnings per share well over 50 to as much as 91 percent over the last three years in other words they've almost doubled earnings per share every single year for the last three years and free cash flows also with a massive 46 to as much as 80 percent growth here so these numbers are nothing short short of absolutely extraordinary. So this is going to be my reaction after looking at these stocks. It is absolutely just shocking in terms of three, five and 10 year revenue growth and shares outstanding have also, also of course gone down over the last five and three years and estimated forward next 12 months earnings per share expected to increase by well over 200 and 79%. So very, very insane growth expected. Now, of course, all of that is coming at a huge cost and that is the valuation, of course, on a trailing 12 month basis, you'll notice the company trades at, of course, very expensive numbers here, 76 times trailing 12 month earnings, 40 times sales, 82 times free cash flow, 80 times operating cash flow, 90 at almost 100 times cash. And we've got 65 times enterprise value to EBITDA and enterprise value to sales, trading at just over 40 uh, as well for the company. And of course, margins are extremely strong, 78% gross margin, almost 60% operating margins and 53% net margin for the company and an extremely efficient business with almost a 70% return on asset, 72% return on invested capital, and over 111% return on equity with 3.5 times the current ratio, quick ratio over three, net debt also at negative $23 billion. That means more cash than debt on the balance sheet. So this table essentially gives you a bit of an overview of the entire company in terms of growth, valuation, efficiency, financial health, especially the margins, and of course, some basic data as well. Total assets over total liabilities and total assets over over debt, both of these numbers well over two to as much as seven and net debt to EBITDA negative and debt to free cash flow also really, really low at 0.25 because the company's got plenty of cash on the balance sheet to pay down all of their debt. Now coming over to the money best metrics. Now the company actually scores a solid 3.93, almost a four out of five here, which is extremely high, one of the highest on our platform at the moment. And if I, uh, again, scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that every single metric is growing rapidly. So if you switch this to, let's say seven years, uh, you'll notice that we are seeing a high growth, high growth, high growth check mark across the board with shares outstanding also going down by about half a percent over the last seven years. So that's also very good. And every single metric revenues have pretty much gone from about 91, uh, actually 9.7 billion to well over $60 billion in 2024. Um, and then of course, $5.8 billion of gross profit uh, has now increased to well over almost 44, 45 billion. And bottom line profit has gone from 3 billion to almost 30 billion. So 10x growth here in the last seven years 
and cash flows, operating cash flow, free cash flow from 3.5 and 2.9 billion to well over 27 to 28 billion dollars. And shares outstanding has been more or less the same. Earnings per share from 12 cents to well over dollar 19 for the company. 52% increase on a compounded annual basis for this business. Uh, scrolling down to uh, profitability. So again, margins have expanded. Uh, they've gone from about just under 60% gross margins to now doing well over 70%. So not only they have you know combined massive growth here, but also massive margin expansion as well. Every single margin has expanded rapidly. 33% operating margins to now 55%. Net margins from 31% to 48%. EBITDA 35 to 57. And cash flow margins. We're talking operating and free cash flow from 29 to 36% to well over 40% for the company as well. Uh, again, very very efficient business. However, they have on average paid out quite a bit of stock-based comps. So on average, in the last seven years, they've paid about 21 to 27 percent in stock-based compensation as a percentage of operating cash flow and free cash flow something to keep in mind uh, but operating leverage as of 2024 was actually very strong at 3.46 meaning the revenue growth uh, even though it actually grew operating uh, income growth was actually much much stronger so if you come back over here you'll notice that the operating margin expansion was a little bit more than the growth in revenue so in other words if you take a look at the revenue growth here Kager. 36.47%, but operating income has actually grown at over 50%. So that is operating leverage. That's what that means because the revenue growth is actually at growing at a slower pace compared to operating income. That means the company's got a lot of operating leverage that they have. In other words, they can keep their expenses flat to somewhat stable while also growing revenue at a very, very nice pace. And as a result, operating margins going up. And we're also seeing operating leverage. Balance sheet is nothing short of amazing. Uh, even though the debt is somewhat increasing a little bit, so it has gone up by almost 19%. Cash is increasing at a much faster rate of 22%. And everything else is excellent to really, really good. Uh, we're looking at quick ratio over five, current ratio over six, debt to free cash flow really low 1.12 on average, 0.36 as of 2024. Total assets over total liabilities, total assets over total debt, uh, net debt to EBITDA, cash to debt here. We got solvency ratio of 137%, absolutely insane. And inventory and goodwill. These are also two things that I've included in our analysis and our money vest metrics on the platform is inventory and goodwill as a percentage of assets really, really low. And that's uh, just a little bit over 8%. So that, again, is getting a good and a very good check mark at the moment. Now, while everything so far is fantastic, I mean, we've looked at, looked at the company from a growth perspective, profitability, efficiency, and financial health. Four out of five things, absolutely amazing. And guess where the problem really is for NVIDIA, which is, of course, the valuation. And this is the 2024 valuation for the business across the board. It obviously, you know, scores very, very low at 2.14 out of five because of the very expensive valuation here for the company. Now, this is comparing against its own average over the last seven to 10 years. So you'll notice 108 times uh, earnings. This is on a trailing basis. I'll go over the ratios in just a minute. And price to sales at over 52 on a 2024 basis. Price to free cash flow almost 120. And price to cash 117. Price to operating cash flow 114. Enterprise value to EBITDA over 91. So needless to say that this is, of course, a very expensive stock. And if you come over to fundamental analysis and more specifically the ratios, we're going to go over some trailing and forward multiples. So if you scroll down, I think this is going to be a much better estimation. Now, a lot of people talked about NVIDIA being, you know, fairly valued at 37 or 35 a few weeks ago. Guess where it is now? 48 on a forward basis. Trailing 12 months, sitting at well over 76. Price to sales, if you come down a little bit, Price to sales on a forward basis, 27, trailing at over 40. Earnings yield has come down to 1.31% with a forward earnings yield of 2%. And we got a price for free cash flow trailing 12 months, 82. Uh, free cash flow yield of 1.21%. Price to operating cash flow trailing at 90 or actually 80. And price to cash trailing is over 98. So a lot of people would actually look at this number, which is price to earnings on a forward basis. Let me just do that in a different color. So, you know, a lot of people are going to look at NVIDIA and be like, you know what? The price for earnings on a forward basis is actually not bad at over 48. And then uh, if you take a look at price to sales on a forward basis, so this right here is the second thing, it's around 27, which both of these number of people would look at and be like, you know what, it's actually not bad. And you're right. I mean, in terms of the growth rate that it has, NVIDIA is actually not bad at these levels at 48 times forward earnings multiple and a 20 to 29 times forward sales. Another really cool thing that you can do with the platform is if you want to come over to the income statement 
And let's just look at the 10 years. It can literally show you how well the revenues and everything has grown. I mean, just take a look at this growth. I mean, NVIDIA was more about stable here, kind of went flat. And then, of course, at, at, after the introduction of artificial intelligence, it has just gone absolutely parabolic. And if you add a few more things to the chart here, so let's just go ahead and add, you know, gross profit. And just for fun, let's just add operating income, net income also uh, to the mix. And now you've got a chart that literally just looks absolutely bonkers because everything's just been going up, especially the last, I mean, year 2024, they've absolutely crushed it in terms of their growth here. And now if you come over, you know, let's just go ahead and remove everything for now. And then uh, let's just take a look at the balance sheet items as well. So let's just include for total cash. And then we'll also include for total long-term debt. Uh, and this right here is what it, what that looks like. So plenty of cash. So this right here is going to be their cash. Of course, their debt really, really low. So net debt also being negative. So very strong numbers here for NVIDIA in that sense. Um, so coming over to some analyst estimates. So before we actually jump into our analyzer to figure out, okay, you know, what's going to be the uh, intrinsic value or the fair value for NVIDIA. Let's just quickly take a look at where we are. So strong buy rating, not a surprise. We've got 36 ratings, uh, 36 buy ratings, six hold total. So 36 buy, six hold. And this right here is going to be the price target with $157 as being the street high, which is just under $1,600 on a pre-split basis with an average target of about $122 and a lowest price target of $48.32. We got average $122, lowest $48, and the highest price target of $157 for this company. So basically looking at earnings expectations for NVIDIA over the next, uh, say, 10 years or basically eight years out. Uh, and this is where the crazy part begins because 2024, the EPS expectations for NVIDIA are at about $1.19 and going as far as 2032. And by the way, this is not split adjusted right now because we have to fix this bug from our back end. Uh, right now, it's showing you $63.95 when in fact, this should be $6.39. Uh, and this should be, of course, $5.00 and 70 cents, five dollars and 11 cents, four dollars and 55 cents, so on and so forth. So it should all be divided by 10 because of the split that Nvidia went through by 10 for one. So but still, the, the crazy part is that analysts are expecting for NVIDIA to go from $1.19 all the way to $6.40. That, folks, is an increase of about 6x in the next eight years for NVIDIA in terms of bottom line earnings, which is, of course, a really, really high growth rate. Um, and, of course, we're like looking at, you know, multiple times over for NVIDIA in terms of that growth rate. So um, that, of course, is going to come out to a very, very high CAGR, CAGR. And if you, of course, divide these numbers by also um, about 10, so that's going to come out to around 7 to 8% in terms of that CAGR. Actually, it's going to be much, much higher. I'm going to do a very quick calculation here. So 1 times 1.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, so a little bit lower. So one times 1.25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's going to be around 40% in terms of that growth rate that analysts are expecting over the next eight years from 2024 all the way through 2032 for NVIDIA, which again, you, you can be the judge of how sane or crazy that is from an expectation standpoint. And same goes true for revenue as well, uh, from $60 billion to now well over 200 and 80 to 190 billion dollars for the company over the next eight years from all the way through 2020, uh, 2032 for the company. And of course, price to sales also coming down substantially. And same thing is happening for price to earnings as well. It's expected to come down on a forward basis from 47 down to about 20, again, on a split, split, split adjusted basis, close to around 20 for the company as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over to the analyzer tool and try to figure out what's the intrinsic value for NVIDIA, what's the actual fair value for the company. So remember, analysts are expecting on a seven-year basis by about 40% growth rate. So if we apply analyst expectations, 40% growth rate, and we go with, let's say, a 40 times P multiple, and we hit calculate while keeping everything else intact, discount rate of 12%, margin of safety of 10%, share dilution also pretty stable. If you hit calculate, we're looking at NVIDIA being stale, undervalued by about 65% and with a fair value of about $216 per share. And this, of course, would be the intrinsic um, value sensitivity grid based on your PE multiples, based on your intrinsic value. Of course, the value would also change. But if we look at a little bit more conservative approach, because I feel like 40% growth and a 40 times P multiple over the next eight years, seven years 
is very difficult to do. I mean, sure, NVIDIA can do it, but at the same time, it is not easy, right? It is extremely difficult to do, and NVIDIA already is priced for perfection here, so we have to build in a higher margin of safety. So if you apply a more conservative multiple of, let's say, you know, let's just go with 30, and 30 is going to be, I think, on a long-term basis, on a long-term average basis, still a higher growth rate, but it's achievable by, by, by NVIDIA. NVIDIA, of course, is, you know, being priced for perfection here, it's still possible that NVIDIA is able to accomplish a growth rate of 30%, especially when you look at artificial intelligence and everything that NVIDIA is doing at the moment. If you apply with a 30 times P multiple and a little bit of a higher margin of safety, uh, 10 to 20%, uh, let's just go with 20% for now and then hit calculate. Uh, we're looking at an intrinsic value of about $85 a share. If you go with 10% margin of safety, you know, same type of analysis, keeping everything else the same. We're looking at a fair value of $96.50, about a 26% downside potential needed for NVIDIA. And this right here, of course, is going to be the entire sensitivity grid for the stock with a fair value of close to 96, so it's just under 100 bucks. And based on different expectations for price for earnings and growth rates, that is going to be the analysis for NVIDIA. And I would be a lot more comfortable, honestly, at sub $100 for NVIDIA because I feel like that would be a lot more appropriate based on its growth rates and earnings expectations and of course the P multiple as well because remember as numbers get bigger and bigger uh, the, the growth rate slows down uh, the P multiple comes down and eventually that's where we're headed NVIDIA is such a large company now and it's a huge accomplishment that it's going to go in that direction eventually numbers and growth rates and everything is going to materialize at a more stable rate at around 25-30% growth rate even at this size and scale it's going to be very impressive and if nvidia is able to grow at that rate and you'll notice that if you actually bring the growth rate down to let's say 22 to 24 percent and now we're looking at you know a fair value for nvidia closer to 60s and even 70s based on the price earnings multiple of 28 to 30 if you go down a little bit uh to the left of this axis 24 to 26 now we're looking even lower uh, intrinsic values for NVIDIA. Of course, the higher you go in terms of that uh, price earnings multiple and the higher you go in terms of growth, now we're looking at well over 120s, 140s, closer to where it is at the moment, trading in and around those levels. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and what do you think about NVIDIA stock. And again, if you want to get access to this entire platform, do your own research, do your own analysis. We'll love to have you on board and get some feedback. 51% discount right now for this beta launch. Link's going to be down below. We'll love to have you on board. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.